Hi, this is Paul, City Sailing. This is part of the City Sailing weather tutorials. So what I want to talk about now is local effects and local weather. This is the last in the uh, weather series, so I strongly um, advise you to watch the other tutorials in weather before you watch this one, and it will give you a greater understanding. Okay, weather, local effects. So these are the effects around the coastal areas near you. So the first one I'm going to talk about is a sea breeze. And we spoke in the weather about hot air rising with the bonfire effect. So if you have a bonfire, the hot air rises in the middle, it cools and then sinks. So this is the same thing happening, but with a local effect. And it works in the principle that the water cools and warms relatively slowly and the land cools and warms relatively quickly. Well, how does that work? Let's have a look. So here we go. So the land warms up quickly, which is the same effect of having a big bonfire here. So the land warms up during the day, which makes the land warmer than the sea. So on a calm, sunny day, the land warms up faster than the sea. So the air around the land rises and it draws in the cool air from the sea, producing an onshore breeze from mid-morning to late afternoon. We know that's happening because as that rises, it condenses and we see a cloud. And that cloud will stop on the edge of the land. So if we see a banded band of cloud on the edge of the land, it shows that the sea breeze is going to kick in and it's going to happen. It goes a couple of miles offshore and it will top out, if the conditions are right, at about a force 4, 90 degrees to the land. And it gives a really good effective sailing breeze. So it happens on a calm, hot, sunny day in the summer. The land warms up faster than the sea. The air above the land rises and it draws in cool air from the sea. Producing an onshore breeze and as I said before, could be up to force 4 in strength. It lasts from mid-morning to late afternoon. Then in the evening it drops off again. And here we have the diagram. The low pressure, the air warms up over the land and rises. And the returning current of cool air goes round. The cold air sinks, produces a higher pressure and you get an onshore breeze. So us on the shore will see the clouds starting mid-morning lunchtime onwards and we begin to feel the breeze coming from the sea towards the beach cooler than the air that was before. And that is the sea breeze. So if we're doing a delivery and we've got these conditions, stick close to the shore and you'll be able to use your sea breeze to get sailing further offshore there may not be any wind at all. If you're doing water sports such as windsurfing or sailing, you'll have light breezes in the morning and then quite a breeze in the afternoon. Depending on your ability and the breeze that you want, um, you can choose the time of day to get that breeze. On an island, you'll get the same. The island will warm up and you'll get a sea breeze coming in from all angles towards that island and the air rising up on the island. So as the air rises, you'll get clouds forming. So the air rises, it's forming cloud, which can hang over the middle of the island. Sometimes quite handy if you're sailing and looking for landfall, you'll see the cloud over the island way before that you'll see the island. So land breeze. This is the opposite of the sea breeze, and it happens during the night. On calm, clear nights, the land cools down, sea temperature remains constant. The air above the sea rises, because it's warmer than the land relatively and the air above the land sinks, creating an offshore breeze. So you get a cycle of wind, air rising over the water, air descending over the land, and you'll get a cycle of wind, which will give you an offshore breeze. These are usually not as windy as a sea breeze. So here we have air sinking over the land. The air cools over the land and sinks because the air is colder than the sea produces a higher pressure, breeze goes off the land of the sea causing an offshore breeze and then the air warms as it goes over water, it rises, it creates a local low pressure, cloud forms and then upper level it returns, um, returning the current of the cooling air before it descends over the land again. So that's because the sea retains its heat so it's warmer than the land. This is a land breeze can be quite useful for a delivery 
stick about within a mile of the land and you'll get some breeze off the land later in the night. So sea breeze in the Solent. This is quite unique to the Solent because what we have is an island, the Isle of Wight, and we have the mainland. So an island in the mainland at first would create its own sea breeze. But the island being smaller than the land masses would gradually give way to the mainland breeze. So what happens? So the first of the sea breeze kicks in. In the morning, the breezes blow onshore from both directions, creating a calm air in the middle. So you've got sea breeze blowing onto the island all the way around and sea breeze blowing onto the mainland all the way around. This produces quite a weird effect of, I have seen people sail up the Southampton water here with a spinnaker and then sail towards cows with a spinnaker. They're doing completely opposite directions in completely opposite winds. And you'll get a section in the middle with no wind because the wind's going in opposite directions and there's no wind, affectionately known as the cow's hole when there's no wind. So later in the morning, the breezes between the island and the mainland are cancelled, leaving little or no wind. So late morning, little or no wind. Then in the afternoon, the sea breeze will kick in um, with the effect of the land giving a southwesterly um, sea breeze. So if you've been racing in the Solent and there's not, it's been sunny weather and not a lot of wind, um, it may be till late afternoon you can actually get an effective sea breeze coming in and some racing kicking in. So sometimes they'll postpone the race till late, late afternoon till the sea breeze moves in. And you'll see the line of the breeze moving down the western Solent and moving down towards you. Modified sea breeze. So you'll get a gradient wind, which is the wind from the pressure of where you are. Then you'll get a sea breeze and the sea breeze um, will modify the gradient wind. Let me explain. So if we've got a gradient wind going along the coast and then the sea breeze comes in, it will combine the two and it will bend the land in towards the coast. So a modified sea breeze, the direction of coastal wind can be modified by the effect of the sea breeze. It has a greater effect when the coastal winds are light and it has a greater effect later in the afternoon when the sea breeze becomes more pronounced. So how the land affects the wind. So wind is affected by the shape of the land. So I find the best thing to do is to imagine it wasn't wind, imagine it's water and you're looking at a river, which way would that water go? Then you'll get an idea of what the wind is actually doing. It's doing the same sort of thing as if water would do it, but you just can't see it. So the wind will speed up through gaps. It produces eddies in bay. It will rise over the land and descend over the land. So it will follow the same sort of stream as if it was water. Catabatic winds. There's mountains near the coast. Cloud skies might result in radiation cooling. So the air cools up by the mountains, producing a strong downslope of wind so it cools down here it falls down the mountain catabatic and then you'll get a strong wind over the sea quite common in the mediterranean wind through gaps quite common through the straits of gibraltar here so you get a force four squeezes in it's like water being squeezed through a hole squeezed in force eight through the gap and it eases out the other side force five force two and you'll quite often get acceleration zones between islands common in the Canary Islands as well. Here it is, acceleration zones through the gap between Sardinia and Corsica. Wind in narrow rivers, the wind's deflected by the river course, so the wind will then try and follow the course of the river. On headlands, it's as if it's water. The wind follows the shape of the land, causing eddies. The higher the headlands, the more pronounced. So it's hitting, it's going round. Higher one, hitting, going round, you'll get a circle. Um, of air. You can see that if you look on the water. If you go to the Dock and Sailing Water Sports Centre, you can actually see it on the water and you can see the eddies of the wind as it hits um, the building and goes around. Off headlands, it will hit and it will do a back eddy. So as the wind comes back and hits the other wind, you'll get rough water where the two of them meet. As the wind blows off a cliff, you'll get, get a back eddy as well. So in unstable weather, lead circulation develops causing gusty conditions and an onshore wind. So you might be mistaken to think that this is a good place to anchor because you're sheltered from this breeze coming off, but you might be hit by the back eddies of the wind and actually push you into the shore. So shelter from cliff with onshore breeze. Um, the effect of the cliff is 10 times the height of the cliff. 
So the effect of friction on the wind. The surface wind is affected by friction changing its direction and slowing it down. There's more friction over land than the sea because there's more sticking up caused by the trees, buildings, etc. So the air is slowed down and changes direction anti-clockwise backs, which we looked at in a previous tutorial in the northern hemisphere due to the surface friction and the Coriolis effect. So if we look at the gradient wind, gradient wind is the direction of the wind at 500 meters. Surface wind over the sea, it will back 15, 20 degrees and over the land by 30 degrees. Surface wind over the sea will back more the more waves there are. Okay, so a calm sea, it will back less. A rough sea, it will back more, by on average 15 to 20 degrees. So if we look at this, the wind coming into an island, so an onshore wind approaching the land, it backs, changes direction anti-clockwise. So there's the gradient wind, there's the wind backing as it hits the land. So an onshore wind approaches the land, it backs and slows down, comes along and it backs as it hits the land. An offshore wind, which blows off the land, goes the other direction, it veers, changes direction clockwise. So here's the wind blowing, and as it hits the sea, it changes clockwise. Fog. There's three kinds of fog. Um, people get confused about fog, it's really quite simple. Let's talk about it. So the first kind of fog we've already looked at, and that is frontal fog, which is on the wall front. So if we look at it, frontal fog, We'll sometimes get it as the cloud gets lower and lower and lower, we'll get fog on the warm front where it meets the land. So the two other kinds of fog will be radiation fog and advection fog. Radiation fog is known as land fog. So what happens is the land cools down because the land cools quickly at night. So this will happen when there's no cloud cover so all the heat goes from the land into the sky. As I said in the other tutorials, cloud is like a big duvet. So if you've got cloud, you've got a duvet over the sky, it retains the heat. Take that duvet off, we get cold. So duvet off, land cools down relatively quickly. So what do we have? We've got cold land, warm air. So that's one of the first principles of weather. We take a cold drink out the fridge, what happens on the surface? We get condensation. So with the warm air hitting the cold surface, the moisture falls out and you get condensation. Any particles there, it will condensate on particles, it will produce its own cloud, i.e. fog. Okay, that is heavier than the surrounding air. So if we've got a valley, it will roll down the valley and it will stick in the valley. And here we have land fog, canary wolf. And you'll quite often see it like this, and it'll be in layers, um, and it'll be patchy in layers on the ground. So land fog usually occurs in settled weather, anticyclonic or high pressure. Autumn or winter. So the land cools down quickly at night, moisture condenses and forms fog. Fog forms in low-lying lands and sinks into the valleys. It can drift out to sea on the land breeze. So we talked about land breeze earlier. Got fog forming, it will push the fog out to sea. How does it dissipate? How does it go? Well, in the morning when the sun rises, the sun heats up the air, equalises the temperature, and the fog burns off. It's usually gone by lunchtime. So if you've got land fog, and you go out to sea, you can be pretty sure that land fog will burn off and when you come back, the fog would have gone. The other kind of fog is sea fog. And this will happen when you get warm moist air or hear warm moist wind over cold water. Exactly the same again, you've got warm air, cold water. Take a cold drink out of the fridge, condensation on the surface. Cold water is your cold drink. Warm air is the warm air that's around you. 
condensation will form on the surface. So here we'll get condensation forming on the cold water. If there's any particles there, it will form on those particles and produce fog, which is sea fog. And the important thing about sea fog is as long as these conditions persist, sea fog will carry on. And this is sea fog forming. If you get lucky enough to see it form, it's quite interesting, it's magical just to see the, uh, the fog forming on the water. So here we have cold sea, warm moist air, fog forming. And here's a picture of it forming in reality. The interesting bit about this is it's forming in patches. So what happens is if you've got water over headland and it's rising up from the bottom, you'll find that patch of water will be colder than the rest of the water. So you'll find it will form on those colder patches. The wind will blow it away and it will carry on forming on those patches. So the cause of sea fog occurs when warm moist air blows over the colder sea. Most common in the spring when the sea temperature is at its coldest. Associated with south or southwesterly wind. So in the UK, tropical maritime, warm, moist air come from the south or southwest early in the season and we got cold water, fog forming conditions. And here we go, southwest, tropical maritime, so wind in this direction early in the season will get fog forming. How does it dissipate? The air temperature needs to cool down to equalise the sea temperature. So if it all stays the same, you still get the same um, warm, moist air blowing, cold sea, fog will carry on. Even if it's windy, fog will still form. So one of the parts of the world, Newfoundland, um, which is northeast of Boston in America, you've got a cold current coming down, which is the Labrador current, and you'll have a warm, moist airflow coming from the southwest. If they meet, you'll get fog. In Newfoundland, they get more days of fog than they do of clear. Because as those conditions persist, fog will always form. Those conditions have to change for the fog to dissipate. So we need a change of wind direction for the fog to go away. Thanks very much for watching our videos. This is the last one, weather, local effects. Um, we've got plenty more on weather and we've got plenty more of city sailing tutorials. So thanks very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you learned something. Um, please take the time to like and subscribe and watch our other channels and tell all your friends about City Sailing and the tutorials. Thanks very much, see you again soon. Paul, out.